10 big designer brands and 10 hit compliment monster fragrances. Now, obviously there are only 10 slots here for this video, so I decided to just kind of uh, switch things up a little bit, take out some more obvious big brands and replacement for some other brands that are also really big, just to feature some different stuff. So really, if you're wanting to start adding some fragrances to your collection that are compliment focused, compliment based, ones that are gonna do really, really well for you, these are the ones from these brands that I would recommend you to look into. I will provide links to all of these fragrances down below along with the FragranceNet 35% off link. Click that, it'll automatically always apply the current up-to-date discount. That way you don't have to mess around with typing in uh, FragranceNet 35% off code, trying to figure out which code actually works. That link takes the guesswork out of it, automatically applies the best one. So this is pretty important here. We've got some heavy stuff to talk about. Let's get some. So first up, we have the mighty brand of Versace. They are the kings of mid-range price fragrances. They really have a, a strong hold on that price range at discounters. And so I decided to throw this one in, Dylan Blue. So if you're wanting a compliment getter from Versace, I would say all around, this is probably one of your, your ultimate picks. Now, of course, any of the Eros fragrances could be featured in there. Uh, Versace Pour Homme, Versace Eau Fresh, right? All the obvious ones, all the ones that you've heard of and probably smelled. But at the end of the day, I think Dylan Blue is just a no-brainer because I think it has a lot more versatility than Eros. It has better performance than Versace Pour Homme and Eau Fresh. It just has more of a, a usability aspect. And not only that, but it does reach a, a wider spectrum of people. The Eros fragrances are going to be even more playful. Dylan Blue, I think, would be a bit appealing to some people who are maybe a bit older and they want something in this genre. So all around, all things considered, Dylan Blue, one of the best pickups out there from Versace. If you're only after compliments, $40 to $50, depending on the bottle size, this stuff is amazing. Next up, we have the brand of Carolina Herrera. This one is 212 VIP Black. So CH Min Privé, really no longer an option as that one is doing weird, weird stuff online, like $100 for 100 mil. And that's a little bit strange. Uh, typically $50 was the going rate for that one. It's doubled in price. Leads me to think that something bad's about to happen. The original CH Min, that one is just kind of out. The, the reformulation bottle change scared a lot of people off. No one cares about it anymore, at least for the most part. I actually do. I think it smells great, but most people, they don't care. And so ultimately, I thought 212 VIP Black is a really nice option here if you're after compliments. Vanilla, absinthe, and lavender are a few of the main notes. It's sweet, it's creamy, it's a little bit of a fresh balance also. Nice masculine touches here, uh, nice presentation, nice magnetic cap. Uh, it's a good performer also. That's another problem with Carolina Herrera. Typically, their performance on a lot of their fragrances are a bit subpar, a bit below average. Same with CH Min, CH Min Privé, but this one is one that also performs really well. So if you're wanting to dive into the brand, you're after compliments, but you don't really know where to start, I would start here. Next up, we have the brand of Abercrombie and Fitch. So I would say normally, uh, this is a brand that you maybe wouldn't think to put in here. And so that was the idea. I wanted to throw it in here anyway, just as kind of a, almost a wild card. Of course, Abercrombie and Fitch, they're huge, right? Maybe they're not as trendy and popular as they once were. And a lot of their fragrances, to be fair, are maybe you know not so appealing, especially to collectors. But this is a fragrance that I still think is amazing. I think this stuff is just fun, cool, refreshing, and playful. It is First Instinct Eau de Toilette. Now, the Extreme is also fantastic if you can get your hands on it. It's been out of stock for a good while from what I've seen. So, you know, the EDT will definitely have to do. And this one does have the tropical vibe down a lot better than the Intense or the Extreme. Melon, pepper, gin, and tonic are some of the main notes. It's the melon note for me that really does it. It just gives it such a fun, playful, refreshing smell. Now, one of the main problems with this one that you'll find is maybe performance doesn't hold up for you, but when it is smelled by other people, they do love it. It's a big compliment getter. So my solution to that is spray it on heavy. It's affordable at discounters, so you can, you can do that and not be costing yourself a fortune. Like with some of the other fragrances in here, 50, 60, $100, 
it's a little bit painful to douse yourself in it. Something in this price range, not so bad. You can pick up a couple bottles to have on hand for the summertime and really, really enjoy it. I know for me, this is one that I love to wear in the summer. I've made some great memories with this stuff. And like I mentioned, it's in this video for a reason. It is a huge compliment getter. Of course, we have to cover Giorgio Armani, right? Monstrous brand. And of course, they have some seriously iconic fragrance lines. They've got the Armani Code line. They have the Aqua de Jo line. And that's what we do have here. In specific, it's Profondo. So let's be real. You could put the original Aqua de Jo. You could put Profumo. You could put Absolu. Really all of them or any of them would work, but I wanted to focus on Profondo because it's one that has consistently delivered amazing results and it is, you know, one of the newer ones, not the brand new one anymore, but you know, it is one that is just kind of starting its life. It's starting its journey and it's still being picked up in the fragrance community every day, still being discovered. And so I think now's a really good time to hop on this one and enjoy it and wear it before it blows up and becomes a fragrance that quote unquote, everybody wears like Profumo. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's pretty accurate. A lot of people wear Profumo, but that's kind of used in a negative connotation. And then people write it off. They don't wear it anymore. And they tell other people that you shouldn't wear it anymore because everybody else wears it. It's a little bit annoying, right? Because you don't know what everyone else is wearing. And I can tell you for a fact, I've never smelled anyone wearing Aqua de Joe Profumo around here where I live, not once, except for me. So take that with a grain of salt, but for people who are very particular about that, you wanna smell unique even though it is still a huge designer brand from a huge fragrance line, Profondo, this is one you can get into right now, pull a ton of compliments and you will be smelling relatively unique. Yves Saint Laurent is up next. Huge brand, could have gone with some obvious ones here, Lanoui de Lome, Lanoui de Lome Blue Electrique, which is sold out everywhere now. YSLY, EDT, EDP, Parfum, you know, there's a lot of choices here, but I wanted to go here. This is Loam Le Parfum. Amberwood, Geranium, and Ozonic notes are a few of the main notes. I've been a fan of this one for a good while. I've told this story before, so I'll, I'll just tell it really, really brief, but I ordered this when it first came out from overseas. That package never got to me. It was like an $800 order of a bunch of other stuff that was new. It got lost. I got my money back. It wasn't a scam. It's just the risk you take when you're purchasing overseas like that. And so long story short, I didn't get this one. I wasn't able to be one of the first people to review it, get my first impressions. And after that little small hype wave of this one went away, I forgot about it. Long story short, I picked it up for a buying guide video for the Loam line. And as I was testing it before shooting that, you know, uh, it was one that I was really enjoying. I didn't think I was going to, just based off the other reviews, based off even the note breakdown. It didn't look crazy unique, and to be fair, it's not. But it's very pleasant, very sexy, very refreshing, kind of juicy, sweet. It's one that I really ended up enjoying, and it's one that I still do. In the summertime, I wear this one often. So yes, you can go with your YEDP, your Lanoui de Lome, all of those ones. But also, if you're after compliment getters, I would encourage you to give this one a try. Very sexy stuff. Next up, the brand of Givenchy. This one is Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense. Cardamom, Iris, Tonka Bean, and Cedarwood are some of the main notes. So this actually gets compared a little bit to Dior Homme O, which is a beloved fragrance of mine, discontinued of course, right? So, um, you know, it's not really all that similar to me. Uh, I've never really thought that, but it is a strong comparison that does get thrown around. But I'll tell you though, it is really nice. It's also a fragrance that has grown on me heavily. Uh, it, it's one that if it smelled like Dior Homme O, I would have been into it from the get-go, but it really just doesn't have that going on. There's a cypress. There's the iris sweetness, the tonka bean. It's It's got more of a sweetness, more of a depth. And again, it's one of those fragrances that you may wear it or smell it a handful of times when you first get it, and you look at it surface level. You're like, oh, this is, you know, maybe basic because of this or that, or it's boring because of this or that. But then when you keep wearing it, you keep smelling it, you start discovering other things about it. Other notes, other accords start popping up. For me, I get so much more richness out of this one compared to when I first got it. And I think this is actually really, really sexy. Very classy, it's a good performer, it's a nice flanker, it's very modern. This is a, a modern men smelling fragrance. Of course, it's a great, great compliment getter 
all around, all things considered, this is amazing. I highly recommend you to pick this one up, add it to your collection. Whether you have all the other Gentleman fragrances or not, it's not going to be redundant either way. Uh, it is on discounters now, which also really helps that out a lot in terms of the pricing here. I can't recommend this one enough. I did have a change of heart on this one. I didn't hate it in the beginning, but I didn't love it either. Now it's a really, really strong like, if not close to love for me. This stuff is really nice. Next up, the brand of Bulgari. Uh, you know, I'm going to go here. It's Aqua Atlantique. At the end of the day, this is what kills it. This is what does it from the brand. Of course, there's some others. Bulgari Man in Black. That one does really well. Uh, you could go even with uh, Discontinued, but still kind of easy to get Aqua Amara. That one's in stock on some discounters. That one also does well. There's some others. Uh, there's the whole Bulgari Man line in general, I guess, not Man in Black, and there are some ones in there. Glacial Essence does well, but you know, when it comes to my experience, Aqua Atlantique is one that is kind of at an unfair advantage for other people. Like when I wear this stuff, it's on. Like it, it, there's no one else has a chance. That sounds stupid, sounds arrogant. I'm not trying to be arrogant, I'm telling the truth here. When I wear this stuff, the amount of compliments I get is uncanny because the performance is monstrous. I mean, this is a fragrance I've talked about before. I wear this one swimming, I wear it to the pool, I wear it to the lake, I wear it to the ocean because it really doesn't just wash off that way. To get this off your skin, you gotta hop in the shower and scrub yourself down with soap or I guess if you really tried hard enough in the lake or in the ocean, you could get it off, but it still lingers. It's it's just a masterpiece beast. It's got ambroxan, the saltiness, seaweed smell, bergamot. Uh, it's a blue fragrance, but with such a unique twist, there's no other blue fragrance like this. Now it gets compared to other ones like Dylan Blue and stuff, but really it's in a league of its own here. It's also one of the more affordable ones, $40, one of the best performing ones, and just one of the all time biggest summertime compliment getters I have in my collection. Can't say enough good things about this one. If you wanna make some great memories, if you wanna get some great compliments this summer and be the center of attention, Atlantique is one that should be at the tip top of your list. And at this price point on discounters, it's a no-brainer. So we're running down to the end here. We have the iconic brand of Dior. So with this, it's pretty obvious, right? Dior Sauvage, EDT, EDP, even the Parfum, even the new Elixir. But I decided to go with a, a different one, a different new one. Now this, I just did a first impressions on. That just gave it away. This has grown on me heavily. I've been testing it a lot. I will have a full review coming. And even just before this video here, as I was pulling it off the shelf, I picked it up and smelled it. And I'm like, this is special. Been talking to some people that I know in the community, one of my good friends, uh, he's a, a big lover of Dior, Dior Homme. He's got, you know, he's been around, so he uh, has a lot of the bottles of the original Dior Homme Sport, like 2008, which I have a couple bottles as well. But he's been in the game for a long time. And he messaged me the other day and said, yo, this new Dior Homme Sport, this has to be one of the best out there. I'm like, yeah, I agree. Like, this stuff is incredible. It's not just from the, the masses, from the enthusiasts as well. I mean, this stuff is really, really quite unique. And of course, it's the new Dior Homme Sport 2021. Lemon, aldehydes, wood, and elemy are a few of the main notes. It's kind of foresty. It's very woody. That lemon note is what you get up top. It punches through. It's like, uh, it's strong, man. But the Elemy gives off this maturity about it, this uh, slight smokiness there. It's just remarkable. It's not quite your typical sport fragrance. There's more depth, there's more uniqueness, there's more thought into this one. For me, this is like worlds better, a hundred times better than the 2017. It's been one that I haven't really enjoyed all that much at all, uh, the 2017. It never was one that I really enjoyed. Uh, the 2012 I like, the 2008 I like a lot. Of course, that's hard to get. The 2012 is getting increasingly harder to get. Um, so this might be, in fact, I think it is. It, it is my new favorite Dior Homme Sport. Now, again, I still like some of the older ones, but in terms of wearing them, not going to be as often harder to get. In terms of recommending them, I'm not because you guys can't really get them. Get your nose on this, seriously. I have to admit, going into it, I wasn't pumped up hugely. I was like, oh, Dear Home Sport, looks nice. Okay, here we go. But when I smelled this, and again, as I've been testing it more, there is something special about this fragrance. I think it's great. My girlfriend loves it from my other testings as I've been wearing it out and about. It's also been getting some great feedback. This type of thing, it's a Dior fragrance. It's a sport fragrance. 
It's engineered for compliments, for, for smelling fun, sexy, and fresh, refined. This stuff here, this kills it. Second to last fragrance, we have the brand of Victor and Rolf. This one is Spice Bomb Extreme, vanilla, tobacco, black pepper, all sorts of cozy goodness here. Spicy, warm, sweet. Love it. Nice bourbon vanilla, nice spiciness. Nice, rich pipe tobacco. Absolute beauty. Absolute stunner of a designer fragrance that, no surprise, will pull you a ton of compliments. Performance is great. The quality is fantastic. It is a little bit pricey, even at discounters, but it's well worth it, in my opinion, and many other people agree as well. Spice Bomb Extreme, this stuff is just out of this world good. We don't deserve Spice Bomb Extreme. It's that good. Last up, the brand of Chanel. You guys didn't think I was going to put it in, did you? But uh, I did. I did. At the very end here. With Chanel, it's almost like they have way more just compliment monsters than Dior. Because when you think about it, Dior Homme, a lot of them are going to be divisive. The new Sport is great. The new 2020 is really good compliment-wise. But Dior Homme Intense, it does get compliments. Not always as much. The original, all that stuff. But Chanel, they've got basically the whole Allure Homme line. All of them. And this line, Blue de Chanel, Eau de Parfum. Any of them will work great, work wonders. Blue de Chanel is kind of a guilty pleasure for me. It's a fragrance that I still pick up and smell and spray and just have a blast with it. And that may sound lame, may sound like, what, Blue de Chanel, really? You love that fragrance? Yes, I do. And I'm not afraid to admit it. It, it smells just like a refined rich dude basically to put it blunt it smells like a rich dude who's clean who's fresh who's well dressed who conquers everything i love it i love it so much it's a huge compliment getter for me when i do decide to wear it um it, it's just a fragrance that kind of brings me back to when i was first starting out i remember smelling it for the first time at the time it was ridiculously expensive way out of my price range but i remember just being like holy crap like that is something special and really it is i mean of course, there's a lot of things out there that are in the same ballpark, but at one point, that was like, that was the head honcho. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. That is 10 compliment-getting hit fragrances from 10 huge designer brands. If compliments are the name of the game for you, you found the right video. Hopefully, you found it useful. Hopefully, you go through and pick some of these up and crush it this year. Remember, I will provide links to all these down below so you can check them out and pick them up for yourself. And always remember to check that fragrance, that 35% off link in the description. Uh, that's in all of my videos. So uh, if you're ever going to make a purchase, hit that first. Automatically applies and you can do your shopping. That way you have the confidence and you know that you're getting the best deal. Thank you so much for watching. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.